Hey, lovely viewers welcome to my channel show out. Explosive secrets unravel in Genoa City, will Sharon's risky moves lead to her downfall? In a whirlwind of deception and betrayal, Sharon finds herself at the center of a dangerous game. After a chilling tip from Chance about Heather's autopsy, Sharon scrambles to cover her tracks. Meanwhile, Diane's claws are out as she seeks revenge on Kyle after his betrayal, a theft that could shatter everything. Tensions boil as Nick is caught between Phyllis and Sharon, with Diane and Jack's marriage on the line. Sharon makes a bold, devious move that could implicate someone unexpected, but will it be enough to save her? Phyllis and Chance's shocking affair sends ripples through the city, leaving Summer in disbelief. But as Chance returns to his detective roots to investigate Heather's mysterious death, Sharon's daring risk may be her biggest mistake yet. Is she too deep to escape, or will her secrets come crashing down? Don't miss a second of this gripping drama. Chance leaks information to Daniel on Heather's autopsy, while Sharon gets ready to hide her trail. Saturday, October 5, 2024 Today on The Young and the Restless, Adam informs Chelsea he has no future with Sally, Phyllis leans on Billy for support, and Daniel loses it when Sharon attempts to give her sympathies. Prior to Adam leaving society, he notices Sally. He pleads with her to allow him a moment as she tries to push by him. Not everything he has to say has been said. Better, she replies when he inquires about her well-being. She prefers to keep things that way, which entails avoiding conversation with him. She's finally at the stage where she can go through six hours without experiencing excruciating pain. Not me, he responds. She is on his mind constantly. Spectra tells him to forget about it. Her sensations are intense, yet they are gradually fading. Adam begs her not to ignore what her heart is telling her so clearly. She is not capable of doing it. It hurts too much. This is how he has made things. As Chelsea enters Crimson Lights, Billy is berating someone on the phone for not finishing a task at work. She requests a cup of hot tea, and he hangs up the phone. Billy tells her that he and Victoria had a family meeting as she sits down at a table with him. He told the children that their time together is over. Similar to Connor, he attributed it to his job. Johnny was already informed by Connor. I think it's fine with the kids. She feels relieved by that. They try to strike up a conversation about her son, Sai, and finish their drinks. She questions whether their situation will always be this unpleasant. He hopes not. This is not how it should have ended, they have endured much too much. Perhaps in due course, they will be able to see one another without too much difficulty. That's what he needs to think. Adam stops them, startled to see them together after Billy turned his back on her, thinking that they might never be at ease again. The abbot advises him to continue walking. Billy mentions that Adam hit him while the men argue. Chelsea is horrified by this, and Adam claims Billy is to blame. When Billy began poking his nose into their affairs, things became heated. Billy says Adam is trying to control her with her son. He tells her to stop allowing Adam do that as he gets up to leave. Adam and Chelsea are left to quarrel when he leaves. She maintains that after what they did to Billy, they have no right to criticize him. He hopes she isn't believing she has a chance to reconcile with her former partner. Chelsea wants Billy in her life, even if it's just as a friend, and advises him to stop using her as a football in his stupid macho game. Billy isn't a hero, thus he doesn't see why. Chelsea tells Adam that without Billy, she wouldn't even be here. He's been her saving grace. That's only evidence, Adam claims, that she doesn't truly love him. All they had was obligation or appreciation. Not love, not a life raft. She says, raising her arms, he doesn't know what real love is. Maintaining each other's survival is true love. 
The last straw came when Adam blurts out, Sally knows how I feel about you, in response to Chelsea's plea for him to focus his efforts on winning Sally back. After she found out, there was no hope for them. Sally let him go from her heart and went on. He is correct about his lies, even if he can see that they were wrong. Chelsea cannot see what's between them, but their son can. Adam claims that adjusting to the illness of his son has made him the kind of man she needs. He's gotten better at squelching his need to save the day. She claims that there were many more issues with them. Adam acknowledges it, but Billy has already left if he intended to save her from him. Sharon tries to extend her condolences to Daniel and Lucy in Chancellor Park. They are still assimilating the information. Lucy claims that Heather is painting the incident as something other than an accident when she presses for more information about what transpired. How much do you know, Lucy insists. Her father requests that she wait for him in the car. He asks Sharon what's wrong with her when she leaves. Has she lost her mind? She is questioning him about the recent loss of the lady he loves. Perhaps she ought to give them some room to grieve privately. He leaves irrationally. When Phyllis wanders into the athletic club, she discovers her daughter and Chance enjoying nachos. They are aware of her distress. Phyllis collapses into a chair and says she has bad news. When she tells them of Heather's passing, her daughter questions how this could have occurred. Chance says he'll give them a minute before leaving to take a phone call. Phyllis is crying to Nick and attempting to gather herself. Her daughter is devastated for Lucy and Daniel. His life finally appeared to be coming together. Summer dashes by Chance to visit her brother. Chance is informed by Phyllis that she has never seen her son so divided as he is right now. He claims that Daniel will require every bit of assistance. From what he's just been informed, things are probably going to get much more complicated and awful. He tells her that an autopsy report is on the way and it might be cruel because he has a buddy in the GCPD. She is unsure how this could be worse. All Phyllis wants is for him to be there for summer. Chance queries Phyllis on who she can confide in. After giving it some thought, she says Nick does an excellent job of keeping her grounded. He seems a little worried, but she's strong enough to manage this. In an attempt to learn more, Chance heads to the station. Sharon walks up to Phyllis, who is standing at the bar. Sharon begins to express her sympathy, but Phyllis covers her face. Although she knows Daniel thinks she's the evil person, she insists she's not. Phyllis loses it and says that Sharon is upset that she isn't the center of attention anymore since she was receiving so much of it. She has spent weeks insulting and attacking her family, and she will never forget it. She is determined to ensure that no one forgets since it was not a nice or beautiful thing. She walks off furiously. Daniel receives a call in his apartment from Chance, informing him that he will be dropping by with some updates regarding Heather. He gets a big hug from Summer when she shows up. Lucy is attempting to relax in her room. Daniel says he had to tell Paul the bad news. He became a little bewildered when he heard the anguish in his voice. The hardest part, he says his sister, was identifying the body. He has been alternating between numbness and anguish. Seeing the person in front of him when they were no longer truly there was quite strange. Summer assures him that she will support him in any way that she can. Daniel sniffles and says he just feels like he's going through the motions and wandering around in a haze. Chance enters the room slowly. The autopsy, he says, is finished. After viewing the initial report, he got his friend's permission to share the information. As it happens, everything they believed to be true concerning Heather's death was false. She was probably in the water for several hours without drowning. Due to blunt force injuries to the head, she was already dead when she entered the water. They are unaware of what transpired. 
Chance advises them to hold off on drawing conclusions while Summer believes she simply knocked her head. Daniel is unsure about how to inform his daughter about this or what to do with it. Summer advises Daniel to hold off on telling Lucy anything about this until additional information is available after Chance leaves. He appreciates her presence. He tries to rest, but he is unable to do so. He claims he can't leave when Summer offers to divert his attention and advises they stay at the club with her. It still seems too unbelievable, so they are still attempting to make sense of what happened. When he and Heather got back together, he felt like the luckiest guy alive. He assured her they will be together forever. He can't really keep that pledge, now. Billy stalks inside society and takes a seat next to Sally at the bar. She assumes he's just seen Chelsea when he demands a whiskey. He responds that he was reminded of how much he still cares about his ex when she presses for further information. Adam's interruption of them at that particular moment was perhaps for the best. Although he has made an effort to hide it, their sense of intimacy returned when they were together. They were aware of each other's flaws. With open minds, they entered the partnership. Billy was on the verge of reminding Chelsea how unique what they had was, but Adam put a stop to it. They shift the subject and discuss their jobs and returning to single life. To that, they raise a toast. Sally assures him he's a decent man and believes he's doing much more than just getting by, adding, I promise things are going to get better, for both of us. Billy says, no one has been so positive with me in a long time, following a pause in conversation. He invites her to the launch celebration. She expresses her delight. They are interrupted by Phyllis, who announces that there is a significant work issue. Phyllis apologizes for interrupting the Lonely Hearts group after Sally leaves. She tries to gather herself and says that anything she's going through might have an impact on her work. She declares, Heather died. Billy looks shocked. She says Lucy is crushed and her son is ripped apart. Phyllis hoped he could be her buddy because of their past. Billy cradles her as she leaks uncontrollable tears. Sharon is wiping down tables on the terrace at Crimson Lights while Cameron sits and laments the lack of success of her public appearances. She had a terrible fishing trip with Daniel and Lucy, and Phyllis was not buying her expressions of sympathy. He tells her that she was having public arguments with Heather prior to her passing and begs her to exercise greater caution. She needs to think of a surefire strategy to dispel the rumors that she killed Heather. He tells her that Daniel still hasn't paid because he performs all the clever thinking for her. She needs to take the next action now. Summer meets with Chance at Chancellor Park. She tells him that the idea that Heather could have been purposely harmed makes her brother a complete mess. He says that an investigation has been started by the GCPD. She states, that won't bring Heather back. She made a weak attempt to reason with her brother. Chance responds that he has spoken to the chief, who is amenable to it, when she inquires about his plans to rejoin the force. He's still determined to find her some answers, reinstatement or not. Sharon pulls over at night. She opens the back of the car and removes the bag containing the bloody drags. Cameron informs her that it's now necessary to hold Daniel accountable for the life he stole. The next update for today. Diane's claws emerge in retaliation for son's theft exposure. According to teasers for The Young and the Restless, Diane Jenkins Abbott is already tired of Kyle Abbott, but she'll soon have even more cause for retaliation. Diane will definitely want retribution now that Kyle has taken another devious step against his mother. Diane had been begging Kyle to stay with Harrison Abbott at the Abbott estate rather than moving out as he had intended. But it's obvious that Kyle has drawbacks from sharing a home with Diane. When Kyle managed to stumble upon Diane's laptop, he checked to see if it was still signed in. Because of this, 
Kyle was able to spy on Victor Newman and eventually provide him with information about a fantastic moisturizer that Jabot is developing. Now that Glissade has the chance to proceed with the project, Diane will undoubtedly become enraged upon learning of Kyle's actions. Obviously, if there was a twist, it would be exciting. What if Diane had known Kyle would do something like that and had purposefully inserted false information about the goods to see whether he would fall for it? Diane might have simply left her computer logged in by mistake, but she isn't nearly as good at anticipating moves in chess as Victor is. Whatever the case, Kyle's willingness to break into Diane's laptop and take information speaks volumes about him. Kyle plays the victim all the time, then acts in this way to show that he deserves all the criticism he's gotten. In actuality, Kyle continuously undermined Diane and was ultimately expelled from Jabot as a result. It's his own responsibility that he lost that job, but Kyle can moan about it all he wants and even use Diane's previous transgressions as an excuse for his behavior. Although Kyle is attempting to establish himself at Glissade, is he truly making an effort when he still needs to pilfer Jabot's goods rather than creating his own? We can only hope that YNR is planning a huge one soon since Kyle deserves to fail. Diane, on the other hand, will undoubtedly exact revenge on Kyle for his most recent theft. Given that she's unsure of what more she can do to mend the relationship, Diane may decide to cut ties with Kyle at this time. Diane may decide to fight back, and because Kyle is willing to crawl down in the mud and damage Chabot in the process, the claws may come out. The next update for today. Sharon takes a cunning step. According to early weekly spoilers for Young and the Restless, Sharon Newman will make an unexpected move on YNR during the week of October 7 to 11, 2024. View the most recent CBS Sudsfest spoilers. Early weekly spoilers for Young and the Restless, Daniel Romilotti is framed by Sharon Newman. The bloody rags from the night she killed Heather Stevens are removed from Sharon Newman's car on Young and the Restless the next week. Re-entering his flat covertly, she places the rags in Daniel Romilotti's liquor cabinet. Undoubtedly, this is the Cameron Kirsten side of her mind asking her to frame Daniel for Heather's death in order to exact retribution and hide her tracks at the same time. It is true that the only way to divert attention from her is to frame someone else. Chance Chancellor, a former police officer, is assisting with the investigation on Young and the Restless in the meanwhile. He discovers something the following week that makes him wonder about a new potential interest. Yes, that most certainly sounds like Sharon. Weekly spoilers for YNR, Chance takes a lead. A new angle emerges in the Heather Stevens probe while Sharon Newman frames Daniel Romilotti. It's highly likely that Chance Chancellor would like to rejoin the police department. He so persuades his former GCPD friends to allow him to assist with the inquiry. Chance visits Daniel the following week to provide an update to both Daniel and Lucy Romilotti. He informs them that when attempting to locate Heather's phone, he discovered something unexpected. Lucy then queries, what happens now, on Young and the Restless? Chance says there's still someone to ask. Sharon is most likely the one in question. At Heather's residence, she was the last person to have her phone and she pretended to be Heather when she texted Daniel. That could therefore be her undoing. Early young and the restless spoilers, Diane lashes out at Jack. Diane Jenkins and her husband Jack Abbott are arguing once more on YNR in the meanwhile. The two get into another open dispute at the Genoa City Athletic Club. With young and the restless, Diane is furious. She informs Jack that she doesn't believe he ever gave his all to the notion that she has changed. She believes he still perceives her as the cunning individual she once was. When he tries to correct her, she rushes off, telling him she's had enough. Next week is a dramatic and hectic one for YNR. I watch Sharon Newman on the CBS soap opera every day as she tries to pin Heather's death on Daniel. The next update for today.
Nick is trapped in the face-off between Phyllis and Sharon, Diane and Jack's marriage threat. Spoilers for Tuesday, October 8's episode of The Young and the Restless indicate that Victor Newman will pursue the Abbots with yet another cunning strategy. Victor's desire for Chancellor control has made Billy Abbott a target, but it appears that his next move will be targeting Jack Abbott and Diane Jenkins Abbott. Victor wants to ruin Jabot and hurt Jack on a personal and professional level. Victor's plan will be aided by undermining Diane and Jack's marriage because they are co-owners of the business. Victor will take advantage of the drama surrounding Jack and Diane's relationship, as he has been informed by Audra Charles that friction is rising. Victor will have little trouble finding the proper trigger to exacerbate the situation. At some point, Diane will become angry with Jack for making assumptions about her. Diane will lose her cool and storm out of their shared dinner at the GCAC because it would appear like Jack still thinks Diane is a con artist. Nick Newman will become entangled in a confrontation between Sharon Newman and Phyllis Summers in the interim. Phyllis won't stop biting her tongue about Sharon's behavior toward her family and all the cruel things she said to Heather Stevens. Phyllis might hold her adversary accountable for initiating Heather's demise, given that Heather purportedly required time apart from Daniel due to Sharon. Phyllis would contend that all would have been avoided if Sharon had simply left Heather, Daniel Romilotti Jr., and Lucy Romilotti alone. Nick could, of course, jump to Sharon's rescue and say that Heather's death was not her fault. Perhaps Nick will intervene and urge Phyllis to hold off on blaming the genuine offender until the investigation is over. Fans of YNR are aware that Sharon is making every effort to hide her tracks, therefore she may eventually give the police information about any evidence that has been hidden in Daniel's flat. In the upcoming episodes, that might create a greater disaster than Sharon had anticipated. For the time being, Chance will see Daniel once more to issue a warning. Chance could want Daniel to exercise caution as they don't know who they're texting from Heather's password-protected phone, given that someone has been messaging him from that device. Watch this space for all the amazing news that will soon be revealed. Our YNR forecasts suggest that Sharon may unintentionally cause herself additional difficulties in the near future. The next update for today. What happens if Sharon finds out who this is? October 4th, Young and the Restless. Sharon intends to blame Daniel for Heather's passing, but in an effort to hurt Daniel, it's feasible that she would instead blame his daughter Lucy. On the October 4th episode of The Young and the Restless, Sharon went to retrieve the evidence from the night Heather passed away. It was time to make Daniel pay for the life he took, Cameron said in her ear. Although technically that was an accident, that presumably means Cassie's. But what happens if Sharon isn't Daniel's framer? The actual goal. Cassie lost her life as a result of Daniel's actions. The daughter of Sharon, Cassie, was not shielded from Cameron by her mother in the same manner as Faith was. What if Daniel is losing his daughter because of Sharon's retaliation, as Sharon already lost a daughter? Lucy. Maybe Sharon is blaming Lucy for Heather's demise rather than Daniel. In this manner, Daniel would also have to live without his daughter if Sharon had to live without hers. Of course, Daniel would still have to live without Lucy even if Sharon had accused him and he was sentenced to prison. But directing the facts toward Lucy is even more heinous and insane. Even Sharon finds it somewhat gloomy these days. Phyllis will be incensed no matter who she accuses. Sharon has been a therapist for years, after all. She has assisted countless Genoa City residents in resolving mental health issues. Sharon looks to be acting beyond the limit when she frames a teenage girl. She most likely killed Heather as well, of course, and she is undoubtedly framing someone with the graphic proof. The next update for today. Warning signs of Phyllis and Chance's affair, the twist Summer can't forgive? According to previews on The Young and the Restless, Phyllis Summers is single right now and has been focusing solely on her career and her children. 
Naturally, for a while, Phyllis's new position at Abbott Chancellor will have to make way for Daniel Romilotti Jr.'s drama. Phyllis is still committed to helping Billy Abbott prevent a takeover, but Daniel's ordeal and the inquiry into Heather Stevens' death will keep her somewhat preoccupied. In the October 4 episode, Phyllis gave Billy updates on her condition and offered him a tender embrace while sobbing, however, this does not imply that they would soon get back together romantically. Although Billy and Phyllis are better as friends and allies, they will always have a soft spot for one another. In light of this, the program may allow Phyllis and Billy to maintain their friendship. Instead, YNR has been setting the stage for a Billy and Sally Spectra reunion, inviting her to his impending launch party, among other things. Who would Phyllis be paired with next if Billy and Sally get together? Though Phyllis has a long-standing relationship with Nick Newman, the show could go in a more scandalous one if she becomes closer to Chance Chancellor. Chance is content with Summer Newman at the moment, but she might not get over Kyle Abbott completely. Summer's relationship with Chance may face difficulties if she begins to display signs of jealousy towards Kyle and Claire Newman's romance. Not to be overlooked is a fascinating sequence from the October 4 episode involving Chance and Phyllis. Chance wanted to make sure Phyllis had someone to lean on during this trying time, and they spend a lovely moment together alone. This was the kind of scene that would encourage more time spent together. Chance may begin as a way to support Summer's mother and end up doing something different. After all, YNR used to play with Phyllis and Chance when they were a couple. They might reunite as a partnership on the show, which would also create up an unexpected mother-daughter love triangle. Fans may eventually realize that they were given the first hint about Chance's affair when they reflect back on Chance's backing of Phyllis. There might be a terrible turn of events that Summer won't be able to overlook if Chance later on cheats on her with Phyllis. The next update for today. Sharon is a big risk-taker. Claire confronts Kyle about his past with Audra, testing their bond, while Sharon takes a chance by fabricating evidence to link Daniel or Lucy to Heather's death. October 7 spoilers for The Young and the Restless indicate that Sharon is moving and taking a significant chance. It appears that Cameron has talked her into doing something that, depending on how things work out, might have serious repercussions. Proof Cameron is not done pressuring Sharon to hold Daniel accountable for the life he stole. Life of Cassie Although Sharon has resisted the idea, it appears that she has now made up her mind to follow through. After cleaning up Heather's blood and disposing of her body in the river, Sharon has an abundance of proof. Her attempt to smuggle that proof in order to link Daniel or perhaps Lucy to the murder is a daring move. Will she succeed? Will Chance discover what Sharon is concealing, or not? Not good news. Lucy already had to hear from Daniel that her mother had passed away. They initially believed it to be an accident. The autopsy results, however, have revealed that Heather's cause of death was blunt force trauma. Is this the unfortunate news that Daniel informs Lucy of? Or is there something additional? Are one of them a possible suspect in Heather's murder, or both of them? Former lives Given all her aunt did to her when she was a child, it makes sense that Claire has been wary. Claire and Kyle have developed a closer bond over time, and she has felt comfortable enough to pursue a relationship with him. That changed, though, after she witnessed Kyle and Audra fighting recently. She did pause, for sure. She now confronts Kyle about his former relationship with Audra because she wants to know what's going on between them. Is there blossoming romance over, or will he be able to explain it in a way that Claire can understand? The next update for today. Chance returns to detective work and looks into Heather's death. Chance must become a cop once more after he begins an inquiry into Heather's death. Nick, meanwhile, discovers that he is surrounded by Phyllis and Sharon. Victor is interfering with people's lives. The standard, you know. 
spoilers for the upcoming week of October 7th to 11th on The Young and the Restless Center on an investigation that turns from an accident to a murder. Victor is also up to no good, continuing to screw around with people's lives. The investigator is present. In a bit of a shock, Chance went back to his old haunts after he prudently left Abbott Chancellor. It has to be official if he is starting an investigation into Heather's death. He is once again active. He is now the one investigating what transpired on that crucial evening that saw Sharon and Heather argue. Speaking of which, Chance decides to question his ex-girlfriend as one of his first actions as the investigation's leader. Yes, he does question Sharon. Can she withstand the pressure? Disarray and disorder. Nick carries out his usual routine. He makes an effort to please everyone. Consequently, he finds himself torn between Sharon and Phyllis. These ladies are well-known adversaries, and things have become worse. How insane Sharon had been to Heather, Daniel, and Lucy over the past few weeks, Phyllis swore to tell everyone. In what way will Nick act as a go-between for Phyllis and Sharon? Especially considering that this mentally ill version of Sharon appears to be more devoted to Nick. In reality, what will she do if Nick gives her mixed signals? Is Nick supposed to keep an eye on his back? Stranger things. Expect Daniel will have to inform Lucy of some unfavorable news. When the teenager learns that her mother's case will be handled by the police like a murder inquiry, how will she react? Meanwhile, there must be an enormous amount of commercial intrigue in Genoa City each week. Victor keeps screwing people over or interfering with their lives the following week. Lily Winters is one of those people who just makes things worse. With her, Victor abruptly modifies the rules. Does he eventually inform her that she won't be regaining her position as CEO anytime soon? He also gets into trouble for the Abbots once more. At some point, this poisoning has to catch up with him, right? Nate needs to finally follow up on that enigmatic text from Amy Lewis. Because he has some unexpected news to share when he gets home. What does this signify? And what kind of news is this? Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.